Good afternoon and welcome to Values Talk. Today we're joined by Margaret Vestager, Executive Vice President of the European Commission, and Dustin Cholos, the President of the Renew Europe Group in the European Parliament. I'm Brian McGuire. I'll bring you through the program this afternoon. The main theme for today's discussion is artificial intelligence, and then we're also going to talk a little bit about the future of Europe and the conference uh, that's ongoing at the moment. Uh, but before we begin, uh, Dustin, tell us a bit about the concept of the Value Talks series. Thank you, Brian. So, as you mentioned, we'll discuss about future of Europe. And uh, when we talk about future, the values and principles at, are the foundation of European Union. But what is more important than only to claim about values is to talk concretely how to integrate these uh, values in uh, practical decisions and uh, in the legislation at European level, and how to build our economic and social development based on values. And today we will discuss about a very concrete uh, example, uh, using also the opportunity to have uh, Margrethe Vestager with us, and thank you, Margrethe, uh, being uh, with us. You are uh, the key person in the European uh, Commission when we talk about digital uh, agenda, but also values. You know very well uh, this subject. So artificial uh, intelligence is about economic development, about uh, social uh, evolution uh, of our society, but also about ethical uh, aspects. Okay. So uh, this is why when we start to talk about the uh, future of Europe and the conference of, of the future of Europe, we want to give some concrete example to the people what means values, values being at the DNA of uh, Renew Europe uh, family and liberal family, more generally speaking. Excellent. Mark Vestager, it's really your job to put the practical uh, dimension to this as well, make the rules work in an ethical way uh, for Europe. What's the state of play when it comes to artificial intelligence at the moment? Well, how, how long do you have? Uh, <laughs> 60 no. seconds. <laughs> no, the very short, uh, the very short version is, of course, that we want to promote the use of technology, uh, also artificial intelligence. But the only way to do that is if you trust it. You don't embrace something that you do not trust. And uh, and this is why we have found that there are some use cases where there is a real risk that our values will be squeezed. So in those situations can be if you apply for a job or you apply to be accepted at university, you want to get a mortgage uh, to buy a house. In these situations, you want to make sure that you are seen as the person you are with no prejudice, with no bias. So in those use cases, of course, we want to mitigate those risks so that we can embrace the use of technology. And then there would be a few use cases where we'd say, no, this is simply not in accordance with our values. So we want to make those use cases prohibited in the union. A good example of that would be a state using a sort of social scoring based on surveillance of the citizens. OK, thank you for that. We're going to come back to some of those issues uh, in a few minutes as well. But before that, this short video, just to give you some more background on artificial intelligence in Europe. Artificial intelligence will soon be everywhere. In our phones, health systems, media, law enforcement, tourism, education, agriculture, you name it. AI systems have a strong potential to bring benefits and economic growth and enhance EU innovation and global competitiveness. But certain systems may create new risks related to user safety and fundamental rights. This leads to potentially slower adoption of AI technologies by businesses and citizens due to the lack of trust. The European Commission wants to make sure that AI used in Europe is rooted in credibility and excellence. AI development and use should be focused on us, human beings, and should be consistent with our European values. By turning our union into a hub for cutting-edge AI, we can demonstrate an ethical, human-centric approach to it. This is what Margrethe Vestager, the Executive Vice President of the European Commission for a Europe fit for the digital age, is fighting for. As a key member of the Renew Europe family, Margrethe Vestager is working on encouraging the development of AI while respecting European rules, and at the same time on fighting the abuse of data by tech giants. 
In May, the European Commission proposed new rules and actions aiming to turn Europe into a global leader of trustworthy artificial intelligence. The combination of the first ever legal EU framework on AI and a new coordinated plan with member states would guarantee the safety and fundamental rights for people and businesses, while strengthening AI uptake, investments and innovations across the EU. In the European Parliament, Renew Europe is taking the lead in creating a comprehensive vision for AI. We defend key positions in the Special Committee on Artificial Intelligence, led by their Renew member Dragos Todorake, but also in the legislative work related to AI in the other committees of the Parliament. In Renew Europe, we believe that artificial intelligence can make a huge contribution to improving the lives of European citizens and fostering prosperity within the EU. We believe that investment capacities, data infrastructure, research and the definition of common ethical norms should be regulated on European level. Our goal is to establish a framework which enables the development of trustworthy, ethically responsible and technically robust artificial intelligence. Margaret Vestager, the idea that we need to combine excellence uh, with trust, but still be a global leader uh, with this as well, what does that mean to you? What is that going to mean practically? Well, the excellence part is to invest uh, in the development of artificial intelligence and to enable businesses to use much more artificial intelligence. And you know, it is so with talent that talent attracts talent. So, so here we can really create a, a, a good uh, momentum uh, by investing uh, funds from uh, Hawaii's in Europe or, or national funds in creating this um, uh, ecosystem of excellence. And the ecosystem of trust uh, comes from the willingness uh, to regulate the use cases where there is a risk of us being discriminated. Um, or, or values, simply not being adhered to. And here we have been working with uh, a lot of people around us. Uh, basically, the starting point was, uh, was in a high-level expert group, uh, 52 people who gave us, gave us sort of uh, ethical uh, principles. From that, we made a white paper to, to get as many uh, views as possible on board. And only on the basis of that did we make the proposal to say, well, some use cases, they need to be um, dealt with in a more restricted manner in order for us to trust okay. that that technology works for us. Let me ask, uh, Desi, in this white paper, are, are you comfortable that excellence and trust are embedded within that? Like uh, Margaret says, talent uh, will attract talent and uh, we will become a global leader as a consequence? No, I think what is... Uh, more important than uh, having rules because yeah in some in some fields the people don't like too too much rules but uh, worse than having rules is to have unpredictability so i think what european union will uh, uh, will furnish is to have a clear framework on how to develop this uh, sector and where to invest and we have a we have a good example with GDPR uh, data. When uh, the liberal group asked it for protection of uh, data of people, because data are now the new gold mining for, for the economy. So if we will have clear rules from the beginning, uh, debating about how to, how to integrate uh, ethical aspects to the uh, industrial uh, development, uh, I think this is uh, we will this will give predictability uh, to the investors and uh, Europe uh, can become okay. a, a leader and can become also uh, a leader in uh, uh, producing standards at international level. Okay, Marcus Vester, we hear lots of horror stories about AI replacing humans or outsmarting humans. Though I'm sure that's not terribly difficult. Uh, but so, how do we mitigate the risk elements in this as well? You know, how can legislation uh, soften the edges with this? Well, I think uh, the problem is that often horror stories they travel really fast, uh, but all the good stories they travel only mouth to ear. Uh, and what you see, for instance, I have I have seen doctors, you know, passionate to use artificial intelligence to help them look at sort of blood test results in order to 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 find cancer for you not to have the uncertainty, having to wait for a very long time before you get 
you get the, the answer from your doctor, having to wait way too long before treatment can begin. Just to give you one example of all the many, many things that we can do with artificial intelligence. And, and when it comes to being outsmarted, uh, of course there is a risk, but sometimes if well done, technology can also be more neutral than we sometimes are as humans, because the, the risk that things are biased comes from the fact that we as humans are biased. So if we can be more neutral, give better data uh, into uh, the machine so they learn okay. what, would, uh, what would a world be uh, without discrimination, then sometimes actually this can be a push for us as humans also to discriminate less than we would otherwise do. But let me ask Adassian about that. You, you, this is perfectly true that we, we shouldn't assume that humans are without prejudice, without uh, risk uh, there as well. And we take some measures to mitigate that. You talked about the ethical framework that we need. Uh, how do you get this balance between mitigating risk and uh, allowing innovation? You know, as long as the technology uh, help us uh, to treat uh, uh, some uh, diseases, uh, we are on the, on the good track. Uh, but, uh, you know, we talk about data, for example. We need a lot of data uh, to make work uh, some uh, software and to, uh, to produce some solutions. So here, I think, uh, ethically speaking, it's important to protect private data of uh, some people. But uh, as long as uh, this is done and is clear from the beginning, uh, we can see results uh, and we can see that artificial intelligence can save lives and I think this is the key. So it's a, it's a balancing act which has got to be done very carefully at this stage and get it right at the beginning and not have to fix it later. Exactly. Okay, let's uh, take a question uh, from uh, uh, Zeri Areto. He's the president of Young Democrats of Europe. Hello, first of all, thank you very much for letting ask us these questions. And my question is really, what is the long-term strategy of the Commission on free trade and consumption? Do we feel like sanctions are the only measure we should take into account? Or we should also ensure the awareness of the consumers on free trade and competition? Thank you very much. Margaret Vestager, I think that question's for you. Oh. Yes, I think so too. And it just allows me to add one thing to, to what uh, Dashan just said, which is that when you trust technology, then you're also creating a, a market for it. For instance, if public sector pick up artificial intelligence because you know it can be trusted, for instance, to be used in, in, uh, in, in social affairs, then you create the market for uh, technology. So it's also a driver. Uh, and, and I think it's important to take that into consideration that trust is not something that is just putting up barriers. Trust is also something, also something that opens doors. And that would lead me to, to answer uh, the question because uh, we have basically sort of retired uh, old ideas of free trade. Nowadays, we make much more uh, advanced uh, trade deals that would take into consideration uh, environment, uh, climate change. You know, we would not sign uh, trade agreements with someone who would not uh, sign up for the Paris Agreement. And I think that is really important that we develop and give another sense of richness uh, when we trade with one another, because then trade, tech, development uh, in our relationship becomes one and the same thing. Uh, we just launched the Trade and Technology Council with uh, our US uh, partners exactly to be able to discuss these things and to have a closer relationship with some of this richness uh, that we just discussed. Thank you. Desian, markets like certainty, they like stability, they like the rule of law and businesses need that to invest as well. So uh, just like, like uh, Margaret was saying, you, how, how do you see this in terms of creating markets? Should we uh, make sure the rule of law is front and center with the artificial intelligence uh, strategy? Uh, I think uh, rule of law, it's a key element in all democracies. So it's not only about European uh, Union. We insist on that because we, uh, we are a union of uh, member states. And it's important to have, if we have a common market at European level, to have also common rules and the rule of law uh, are, are key as a common rules. But uh, when we uh, share the same values uh, with our other parts of the world, so uh, it's, it's normal to insist for rule of law. 
and in general for standards. You know, you, you say that the uh, uh, European Union is a good producer of, uh, of rules, but uh, in artificial intelligence, I think we have the opportunity to become uh, those who will uh, produce standards uh, for, for the rest of the world also working in partnership with the uh, US, for example, and why not with uh, China. Uh, my colleague Dragos Tudorake, who is the chair of uh, Artificial Intelligence Special Committee in the European Parliament, we created this committee exactly for that reason, to put together people from several committees to discuss about these market aspects, but also ethical, uh, human and uh, uh, social uh, aspects. So if we'll give predictability for our investors, okay. we'll give predictability also for our partners and uh, we can start the reflection on how we can have uh, standards uh, at international level. Thank you. Let's go to another question. This one's from uh, Georges Papescu, who's a Romanian journalist who specializes in technology. Greetings, Mrs. Vestager. My name is Georgia Popescu and I'm a Romanian journalist specialized in technology. Let me first congratulate you on your successes in fining tech giants like Amazon or Google over the infringements of data. My question to you, however, is how are we within the European Union supposed to fight fake news and the general distortion of media using artificial intelligence? Thank you. Margaret, over to you. Well, that is indeed a question that has been, uh, been troubling us uh, for a very long time uh, because fake news is, uh, is really damaging uh, for our democracy and for our common understanding of, of the world that we live in. Uh, so a, a number of things uh, can be done and, uh, and must be done. Uh, one thing is, for instance, that you know when you're dealing with a machine that there is sort of a, a labeling. Uh, if it's a machine talking to you, you should know that. Uh, second thing, we have just strengthened our code of conduct uh, where all the major platforms have signed up uh, in order for them to work more with us. Uh, we saw it under the pandemic where uh, platforms... Um, sort of pushed uh, trustworthy information about the pandemic so that if you wanted to find sort of the conspiracy theories and, and the fake, you, fake news, uh, you would really have to look for it. But you would, as the first thing, you would find trustworthy information about how to protect yourself, how to protect others. And I think it shows the balance that we both need to work with the platforms just as well as we need to regulate them in order to make sure that we protect uh, freedom of speech, protect uh, vulnerabilities uh, online, for instance, that uh, child abuse uh, do not occur there, and that we make sure that the market is open for the many, many innovative businesses who, who want to succeed because they meet their, their consumers, not because uh, big techs decide that they should be able to get to the market. Thank you. Desin, you know, artificial intelligence is uh, the new weaponry today as well. You know, if we pre to preserve democracy, uh, do we need to have the biggest, the best, the fastest artificial intelligence in the same way that you used to have the biggest guns, the biggest army to uh, defend your democracy? I think we have to have appropriate artificial intelligence uh, tools. And we also have to be uh, aware by the fact that artificial intelligence is not the panacea to all the, all the problems that we have. Talking about fake news, Margrethe just explaining how it can be uh, used in order to uh, identify on some platforms, some fake news based on facts uh, analysis. But I think we have to look uh, more overly and uh, uh, to answer to uh, 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 George, I just want to uh, underline the uh, strategy on the fake news uh, just presented by uh, our uh, political family uh, colleague, uh, Vice President of the Commission, Vera Jourova. So uh, in this document, you can find also as aspects about uh, internet platforms 
and artificial intelligence, but also other tools that can be used in order to fight against uh, okay. fake news. Thank you. Margaret, you mentioned earlier about the, the importance of data uh, and the inputs and how that can trigger different forms of bias as well. But you were surrounded by technology which is embedded with different forms of AI, perhaps not so sophisticated just yet. But when we come to regulate this, how do you see it? You know, what kind of uh, machines and devices really do we need to pay attention to? Well, I think we, we, we need to pay attention to most machines and most devices uh, because they will all, one way or another, have, um, have learning uh, options uh, or be able to, to support uh, decision making by humans. Uh, and we just, uh, we just looked into how uh, voice assistants work, you know, the Internet of Things, where everything can be connected, your fridge, your oven, uh, your electricity, your heating system, everything can be connected. And, uh, and here, actually, we found uh, some of our usual concerns that it may be very difficult um, to, to, to buy your favorite uh, gadgets uh, without that being from the same one uh, where you bought the first gadget and the second gadget and, and the third that you can actually buy what you like because it can operate with one another. So, so we are finding some of the same competition concerns. And if we find competition concerns, then we also find a risk of losing innovation because competition is the strongest driver uh, of innovation. So it's, it's really important to stay uh, vigilant uh, both for the ethics, but also for the marketplace. Okay, Desian, not all uh, artificial intelligence is, has the same risk level. Clearly, as, as Margaret said, there's a capacity for learning as well, but some were seen as high risk, others not so. And in, in the proposals that the Commission's put forward, higher risk elements will be subject to a lot more scrutiny. Do you think that's the right kind of approach? Yeah, I think it's, uh, uh, we have to concentrate when we talk about rules and standards. Of course, we have to focus on uh, uh, those artificial intelligence parts who are more uh, risky uh, for human beings, for the decisions that uh, humans can, uh, can take. And uh, I think it's, uh, uh, it's important to do this as early as possible, as I mentioned, in order to... Which kind of areas do you think is more important? Criminal justice, for example. How do you keep the human in the loop and how do you regulate that process where artificial intelligence uh, is uh, part of the criminal justice system, for example? Uh, I, I don't the, the criminal, for example, judges may ask for sentencing uh, procedures to be reviewed by artificial intelligence. You know, how, how should Europe view that? Should we go, okay, we can go that direction, but we have to keep somebody in control of this process as well, or do we just separate it out completely? Yeah, I think we have to have a principle, the last decision should be took by the humans, and okay. this is why we have judges. We, I think we will never uh, be in a situation to replace the judges by artificial intelligence, but to help to understand what's happened exactly in a specific situation, then artificial in intelligence can be used. But of course, the final uh, final decision have be uh, have to be done by the humans. Okay, so measured approach with scrutiny. Exactly. Okay, let's take another question. This one is from Sasha Halfen. She's a spokesperson of Le Jeune avec Macron. Good afternoon. I'm Sasha from Paris. Madam Vice President, artificial intelligence is talking a much more important place in the field of health. Based on the speed of innovation, how can Europe can be an example in terms of data protection and also a technical champion in this field? Thank you. Margaret, how do we stay as champions in these fields? Well, we invest. Uh, we invest a lot of money, but we also invest ourselves. Uh, we need many more people, uh, young people and also people who have an education already to in invest uh, their brains in, in, uh, in knowing how to deal with this uh, and, uh, and how to, to innovate, how to use it. And not only to create next generation of artificial intelligence, but also to sort of reinvent our business models uh, to use artificial intelligence because uh, the lack of, uh, of human intelligence uh, to use artificial intelligence is probably one of the main barriers uh, for us really, really to excel uh, in, uh, in this area. And I, I think it will be a very interesting place to educate oneself because as said, we will invest uh, enormous amounts of funding in research, uh, innovation, development, 
uh, when it comes to these technologies. But we can only really be uh, good at it if humans uh, want to invest themselves in, in being the masters uh, okay. of these technologies. That's it. We need to digitally upskill and reskill. Uh, the, the investment that uh, Europe is now undertaking in its economy is focused on green and digital as well. Uh, President Macron, when they launched the quantum report uh, last year, he said France was not ready for this, uh, Europe was not ready for this, and investment in education was really critical. You know, how do you see us becoming champions if our education system is not fit for purpose for the digital age? So we have to uh, invest not only in the basic education system. So, of course, for the new generation, the new generation are maybe even better adapted than, um, I don't know, my generation to uh, work with uh, this new uh, technology. Uh, I think we have to invest also in new pedagogical uh, methods uh, uh, for the education because uh, we have seen now uh, during this pandemic that not all the education system are adapted to work with this new technology. And I talk here about teachers. So as long as the teacher is not, uh, 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 they don't have the, the real, the, the good tools uh, in order to, to educate the young okay. generation, we uh, have a problem. But we have to uh, invest uh, for the uh, long life learning also for mm -hmm. all the people so it's not just about young people, this because, is going to be across the exactly. generations. And this is not uh, just uh, in order to be adapted uh, uh, to our uh, workplace, but also to, uh, to work with, I don't know, uh, public services, public okay. administration, with uh, uh, a lot of things. Uh, the car are now uh, full... Uh, uh, Autonomy. Yeah, by, 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 uh, by new technologies. So, uh, we need to invest in okay. the education and training all of uh, all the people. Margaret, is this just about STEM education or do we need to be building uh, new creative skills, like Dustin said, to work across uh, different sectors, those people that can interpret uh, in a, a managerial way uh, complex projects? Well, I think it's, it's really important to, to, to build on passion here. Uh, not everyone is passionate about being able to code or to develop technology. But if you're passionate about organic farming, well, let's then integrate, you know, uh, digital skills into the education as a farmer. If you're really passionate about uh, renewable energy, then let's build in, you know, courses uh, on, on digital expertise uh, into being an, uh, an engineer within uh, renewables. So that in business uh, education, in order for for uh, for people with uh, with business skills to know how ca how can we develop business models uh, using uh, these technologies, I think we need a, a much more sort of perspective of integration in things that we are passionate about. Because I think most few people think that oh, I should be a technologist. I should be someone uh, working with technology. I think we have a different sort of approach to what should be our profession uh, that is much more passionate. So I think if we can integrate it in everything we do education wise, we have a fair chance of, of many more people uh, being interested in mastering these things. So a broad uh, net approach role and very uh, specific focus on coding. Uh, let's take another question now from Antonio Grasso. He's an Italian AI influencer. Honorable Vice President Vestage, I am Antonio Grasso, an entrepreneur and member of the AI for Europe Evaluation Committee. Working in these roles, I am fascinated by the amount of ingenuity injected into projects. My question is, how can we magnify our collective European ingenuity to increase competitiveness and scale digital leadership? Thank you. How do we, how do we leverage the whole of the European community uh, to go forward this way? Well, first and, and, and foremost, Antonio, thank you very much for what you do. Uh, I think this is really excellent, that, that engagement. Uh, I think one of the things we could do is to uh, talk more about it, you know, honor uh, good ideas, uh, honor the people who, who brings us forward, uh, because that is an inspiration for everyone to learn. And, and I would want us to create sort of lighthouses in Europe of of you know, highly talented uh, people working with artificial intelligence so that uh, that talent can attract uh, more talent and we can have a real pan-European approach. 
And I think we need to, to prioritize. Uh, we need to, to put our money where our mouth is when it comes to, to artificial intelligence. That is the way to, to spread it, to make these interesting uh, environments. And, and then people like yourself uh, could, could get the inspiration maybe to do even more than what you do today. Thank you. Margot Dacian, the European Union has the EIC, it has the European Innovation Technology uh, in, initiatives as well, and you know, research and, and, and technology funding is, is there. Are we doing enough to bring all these elements together with different stakeholders, universities, entrepreneurs like Antonio? I think we already invest a lot in innovation, in research, with a lot of networks at the European level, at even international level. What we have to do more, I think, is to make available this uh, research and innovation and the results of research and innovation to small businesses, to small and medium-sized enterprises to start uh, up because start up and uh, small uh, companies are uh, a very important source of uh, production of new uh, technology. And here in Europe, I think we, of course, we have to invest in the champions in uh, IT and uh, in uh, digital platforms, artificial intelligence, but also in small and medium-sized uh, enterprises. Are you comfortable that, are you sure that your, the Europe's SMEs, which are about 90% of the backbone of our economy, are they gonna get the money from the, the next generation EU funding? I, I think this will depend a lot of how the member states uh, will uh, deal with this money, but I can assure you that European Parliament will look on, uh, on it we are involved in the evaluation of the way that this uh, program will be implemented. And at least for uh, Renew Europe Group, this was a key element from the beginning. Invest, invest in skills, in the people, but also making available these uh, funds at local uh, level for small and medium-sized enterprises. And this can be done because we ask it uh, to have less bureaucracy uh, okay. in, the, in the way to uh, invest this money. All right, I want to get on to talking about the future of Europe. We started a little late and I want to finish uh, on time, but just a, a quick comment from both of you on uh, the risk that we over-regulate and that we limit our entrepreneurs on the global uh, economy, that the, the, there's no level playing field. Margaret, are, are you confident we'll get this balance right or are we still at, uh, too early to decide when it comes to AI? But just one thing when you're asking about funding, uh, actually we're in the process of, uh, of having uh, artificial intelligence help small and medium sized businesses find their way in our different funding systems. Of course, that talks to the complexity of our funding systems, but it's interesting that <laughs> also here there is a use for, for artificial intelligence. Uh, on, on the conference on the future of Europe, of course, these are very early days, but I hope that that the conference will, will uh, sort of guide us as to where to deliver. Uh, because even when we have sort of our overall strategies about digital transformation, uh, fighting climate change, being climate neutral, uh, there are so many things that we can do. And I think it's important that the conference is, is tangible, concrete, uh, telling us what is expected so that we can deliver uh, concrete results that allows people to have more opportunities than they have today. Okay, Desin, digital transformation is a key topic for the, uh, the conference. What do you want to see? What would you like to see at the end of this process when it comes to digital transformation uh, as an output from the conference? You know, you asked uh, before how to avoid an over-regulation. I think uh, being in touch with the people, we can avoid to over-regulate. Uh, so going beyond the Brussels bubble or, I don't know, the legislative uh, bubble, being in touch with, uh, with the people. In, in some sectors, the people ask for standards and for rules exactly in order to have a level playing okay. uh, field and, uh, and uh, uh, proper competition. And this is uh, what we intend to do with this conference on the future of uh, Europe to discuss with people because, of course, we have as a European Parliament mandate to, uh, to, le uh, to legiferate, to take decision on that. But what is important now is to see the perception of the, uh, of the people about uh, what we are discussing and what we are deciding uh, here. So uh, talking about uh, artificial intelligence, we will discuss this in uh, when we'll discuss about digital transformation, okay. but also about values. And we will put together people who ask for uh, more attention on ethical aspects and on values and with uh, the people coming from uh, economic and industrial sector asking for uh, more flexibility. Okay. So 
This is uh, about a debate in the society that we want with this conference. Okay, we're almost out of time, so I just want to get uh, 30 seconds from each of you in terms of how we keep this human. Uh, Ursula von der Leyen, President of the Commission, set out her whole agenda saying we has, this has to be a human-centric uh, approach as well. Margaret, when we talk about artificial intelligence, is it easy to forget this is about improving um, our human experience or are we too focused on the economy? No, I, I think, uh, well, for me, this is, uh, this is top of mind. This is what gets me out of bed in the morning because I see that we can do so much better in health. Just see what artificial intelligence has helped us to map the virus, uh, has helped figuring out what molecules uh, can actually help uh, if you get the virus. Uh, I see uh, the potential in education that you can, um, you can better help uh, uh, young people get the, the level of learning uh, that they are ready for. Um, I see how we can have a more uh, equal access to, to public services. So I, I think this is, this is really a chance to fulfill some of the many, many promises given uh, over the decades about a more inclusive society. And, and last but not least, I think our democracy can show that there is a difference between a democracy and those who are not a democracy, because our standards, our use of technology is, is building on the integrity and the dignity of each and every one of us, where in, in other parts of the world, basically it builds on, on the state wish to, to uh, do surveillance uh, on its citizens. So I think both in our everyday life and in showing what democracy is about, I think we have something really, really strong going for ourselves here. Thank you. Last word, Dacian. You know, Renew Europe is about uh, uh, putting uh, the fundamental rights at the, at the heart of artificial intelligence as well. For you, is this about tech for good? And uh, how do you, are you encouraged that we're going in the right direction now? So Renew Europe is, uh, first of all, uh, to do politics and decisions for people. And uh, technology should be for people and with people, not against people. And this is our a key objective in this uh, process to make available a new technology for all category of people, not only for a rich one, uh, for all uh, member states, uh, for all uh, sectors, but in order to do this uh, for the prosperity uh, of the people and in order to improve the life of the people. And this is Renew Europe. This is for us renewing uh, uh, Europe and modernizing Europe, do things for people and together with the people. Thank you, Margaret, Desi, and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you to our audience and for sending in your questions also. You can continue the conversation online and uh, you can tag uh, both uh, Margaret and uh, Desi as well if you want them to hear uh, your voice and continue with the conference in the future of Europe. They want to hear from you, not just in the Brussels bubble. So I wish you a good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.